Aloha, and welcome to Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kili'i Aquino, president of Grassroot Institute. In the midst of this political season, we all know that there's a Democratic Party and a Republican Party, and you may have seen on your ballot in the primary a Libertarian Party. There are other parties as well, but the Libertarians have achieved the status of getting their name onto the ballot with a large slate of candidates. And I thought today, since we've had Republicans, had Democrats, let's have a Libertarian, somebody in the Libertarian Party. My guest today includes uh, Tracy Ryan, president of the Libertarian Party here in Hawaii. And we'll have a candidate joining us in a few minutes. But first, Tracy. Tracy, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, I'm glad you're with us today. So when somebody asks what a Libertarian in terms of the political party is, what's your answer? Well, uh, there's a lot of different ways to answer it, sure. but um, basically the Libertarian Party is a political party that is different from the Republicans and the Democrats. And um, some people like to try to describe us as people who are um, maybe uh, fiscally conservative and socially liberal, okay. or maybe fiscally uh, responsible and socially tolerant. Um, and when we're described that way, we find that there are an awful lot of people say, yeah, I identify with this libertarian idea. The Libertarian Party is like, um, if you can imagine a pyramid, the Libertarian Party is kind of the topmost section, the most political oriented section of an entire period of people who may feel that they are identifying with the liberty and libertarian movement. Well, well, I'm glad you mentioned that, that there is a broad group of people who identify with the ideas that are libertarian, Absolutely. but they may not belong to the Libertarian Party. No. Uh, for example, my organization, the Grassroot Institute, it's, it's not a political organization, so we don't identify with any party, Republican, Democrat, or Libertarian. But if you take the word libertarian, that kind of broadly describes what we think, uh, not as a political group, but in terms of freedom. Right. Uh, constitutional rights, right. uh, right. uh, freer market, and those the ideas. Liber the word libertarian comes from the word liberty. That's right. As does the word liberal, mm -hmm. by the way. And in the 19th century, a person who was designated liberal is largely what we consider to be libertarian today. Okay. Now, if I understand what you said, the Libertarian Party, however, generally consists of people who, like Republicans in general, and, and, and this is simply a, a generalization, believe in fiscal responsibility, a more limited role for government, a freer market, and like Democrats in general, believe in, in social liberty and, and freedom in terms of personal behavior right. and the right of individuals to live you know, they want to live. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That there you be go. Facetious. So you've taken yeah. these yeah. two features of one of the Democratic Party, one of the Republican Party, brought them together and have a bunch of people who want free markets and liberty uh, as well as freedom in, in social right, issues. Right. right. Those are the two main focuses. Um, we also have uh, large differences of, of opinion with Republicans and some Democrats in terms with defense contracting, uh, the large defense budget that we have, and what we consider to be a military first solution to foreign policy problems. Um, the Libertarian Party actually grew out of people who were Vietnam War protesters. One, like a lot of the other Vietnam War protesters, felt that they had an appreciation for the free market system, didn't want to get into a socialist type government, but felt that a lot of the other things that were being represented by what was told we were told were the, you know, the liberal and conservative things were not things they liked, and defense. Uh, policy was a very large who, part of that. Who are some of the big names nationally when we think of libertarian? Uh, I know there's one, Ron, Ron Paul. We all know example. Ron Paul. Ron but, Paul was the libertarian uh, presidential candidate in 1998. Mm -hmm. uh, got the nomination, did not do well in the general election, was treated like, uh, like a lot of libertarian candidates are, uh, not paid attention to, um, and went back and became a Republican congressman. But basically, there's a whole Ron Paul section of the liberty movement, which overlaps between a, 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 a movement within the Republican Party and a movement that's within the Libertarian Party. The Ron Paul people tend to focus a little bit more on the Constitution mm -hmm. than the Libertarian Party is as a whole. In other words, if we're talking, for example, as something about the Second Amendment, which is we, we, gun rights, the Libertarians believe in gun rights whether the Second Amendment has ever been passed 
we don't believe in gun rights because the Second Amendment tells us. Now that's a, a very important distinction you're making right. here, uh, because classical libertarian thinking has a couple of elements to it. It has the idea of freedom right. in and of itself. The people should be free to throw their fists and stop at least at the nose of another person in, in that sense. Certainly. But Republicans, you, you kind of characterized here, are very much committed to a document, the Constitution of the United States. Well, the Ron Paul people are. All right, the Ron Paul. I wouldn't Paul. categorize all Republicans. Right? Okay, very good. Ron Paul people are particularly focused on the Constitution, and the Constitution is a libertarian document, as, as we see. Yes. So both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution are, are documents which were children of the 18th century Enlightenment, which is the birth of the entire liberty, which became the liberal of the 19th century, which became the libertarian movement of the 20th century. So it's, it's a kind of a direct line. It's just that libertarianism exceeds the bounds of the Constitution. We are working for liberty everywhere not just in the United States and within the framework of our Constitution, although that's very important very to good, us I understand. as Americans. Now, that also helps to explain an area in which we, we have a lot in common in terms of the group that I represent, the Grassroot Institute, but where we also diversify. For example, we're very much committed to the, the preservation and, and explication and application of the Constitution of the United States. Mm -hmm. and, and, and while that focuses us, it means we deal with a more limited range of issues. Whereas, and, and don't take this wrong, <laughs> uh, I, I, when I'm at your meetings and with, with people in the Libertarian Party of Hawaii, the biggest thing I learn about is marijuana. <laughs> marijuana and I'm just kind of kidding with you I, a little I, no, bit. I'll tell you, I'll be very frank about marijuana. Mm -hmm. Marijuana is right now the best political issue we have there to you advance go. our party. Oh, go ahead the majority of people in Hawaii want marijuana uh -huh. legal, and it's not legal. So What's up with that? You're tapping in first to the desire, the freedom to do something. Yes. yes. The freedom we to be an adult a, and We not have a told. principled position mm -hmm. on marijuana, which is divergent from the two other major political parties. The majority of people agree with us. So if we want to advance our party, it would behoove us to talk about the issues the voters talk about and not necessarily preach to them about something that I care about that no one understands. Now, we were talking about Ron Paul, and soon we'll have one of the local political candidates at, right after this next break uh, join us, who's a libertarian. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's another figure who has been prominent in championing the Libertarian Party, sure. and that's Roger Christie. Do you want to tell us oh. about him and why that's important? Well, Roger has been basically made a martyr to the cause of marijuana legalization in the state. Uh, he was running a marijuana ministry openly in Hilo. I mean, he wasn't hiding anything. A religious like, ministry. Yeah, and, and using marijuana as a sacrament. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like they were hiding it from him. And his understanding from talking to people in law enforcement was it's okay, no one arrested him, he did it openly for years. But he's also very active politically in various successful measures in, in the Big Island which have limited police powers over marijuana. And there's a strong circumstantial feeling that he was targeted for his politics and treated differently than someone else accused of the same crimes. He was a first-time nonviolent offender who was held in federal detention for over four years without bail as a danger to the community. Mm -hmm. He was not given a, a speedy trial. There were endless series of delays which the prosecution blamed on the defense because the defense had to continually respond to new charges which were added and new things. Um, and then he was ultimately denied his right to make his defense on religious grounds in court. The federal judge said, that's not an acceptable defense in federal court. You can't raise that issue. You can basically only answer the prosecution charges as to whether you distributed marijuana or not, which means there's a sitting duck at trial. Hmm. Um, all of these things, the right to a trial, the right to bail, the right to a speedy trial, these are go well beyond the libertarian movement, well beyond marijuana. Uh, all sorts of people so are upset. Your over party this. then is the one that champions those values, right. the liberty and freedom, right. even beyond our, our well-defined constitutional right. uh, grounds. And you are the champions for liberty. We have to remember mm -hmm. what the, the, the rights of accused people, why they're in the Bill of Rights. The rights to, for accused people are mm -hmm. in the Bill of Rights not to protect dangerous and guilty people who've committed crimes. They're in there to protect other people from politically motivated prosecution. That's why they're in there. And that's exactly what people smell 
when they look at the Roger Christie case. Good explanation. This is Kaylee Akina. I've been talking with uh, Tracy Ryan, president of the Libertarian Party of Hawaii. And when we come back from this short break, we're going to be talking also with one of the candidates in 2014 for political office. We'll be right back after this short message. Don't go away. Tom? Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Josh Green. I'm the host of a program called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'm a physician. I work in the emergency department on the Big Island. I also serve in the state senate, which please don't hold that against me, doesn't detract from my television program. We speak about all the big health care issues in the state. We get together on Tuesdays from 2 o'clock till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And we try to talk about the most important issues in health care. This is a terrific venue for people to learn about health care. There are many programs on this on this station. We broadcast it later, uh, not just on the internet, but also on OC16. Thanks for joining us. Please be informed healthcare consumers. Aloha and welcome back to Ehana Kako on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kili'i Akina with the Grassroot Institute. Ehana Kako, what that means is let's work together. And that means whatever the political party, whatever the value structure, we live in a very small island state. And while we may disagree and indeed need to disagree in order that better ideas rise up above the worst ideas, we still have to work together. With that in mind, we've had Democrats, Republicans, and now Libertarians on our program during this political season. We've been talking with Tracy Ryan, the head of the Libertarian Party in Hawaii, and now we're glad to have a contender for the 41st district seat in the House of Representatives, Tom Berg. Welcome aboard, Tom. Uh, hello. Hello. Hey, Tracy. Good to see you. Hey, Tracy. hey, Tom, why did you throw your hat into the rink? You were in politics before in city council, but uh, why run for the state house? I have 11 years experience working for Democrats and Republicans alike. So when I got in uh, with then Representative Asparo, uh, he replaced Paul Shiro, who was the representative for, I believe, 15 years in the EVA area. When he resigned, Willie Asparo gets in, I got to be his office manager. And so for six years in the House and the Senate, uh, I then worked for Rep. Cabanilla of the district sure. uh, for a couple years. and then. Uh, two years as the administrative services manager for the, so uh, for the minority uh, uh, Republican uh, uh, caucus right. in the House, which is a whole different than being an office yeah. manager. I was on the House floor every day for session, and then finally those two years at the City Council, and I just wanted to say that culminating with those 13 years, seeing how the people are actually, the best example I can give, if I can interject, is this rail tax, how it threads the city and the state together, is that in good faith, it's against the Constitution to profiteer off a tax. So on its face value, when the GET rail surcharge was implemented, and the state and the city had put a 10% administrative fee to collect the tax, the state has, for the last five plus years since 07, making a profit on a tax upon the people, which is against the Constitution of the state of Hawaii. And the Republicans, whether it's Governor Lingle and the administration, and the Democrats, whether it's Abercrombie and the administration, and the leadership in the House and the Senate, have all breached in good faith and acted, in, 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 uh, in my opinion, uh, in bad faith. So on a personal level, you must have felt you needed to stand up I had and stand to. for what is right. Let me ask yes. you this question. Well, you've chosen to run as a libertarian, and, and that's the focus of our program mm -hmm. here. What, why did you choose to run as a libertarian? What does that have to do with standing up and fighting for justice in terms of the issue you're talking about? Beholding to no one. All right. Beholding Fair to play. no one. Getting the pay to play out of politics. When you vote for a libertarian, I believe, Tracy, there's some 17 in, this, in the thicket right now. And of us of 17, trying to pinpoint a platform, something I myself could not do other than not to inflict my will or harm others in making a decision. The Libertarian Party becomes a conduit for justice. It becomes a conduit whereby people know that it's not going to, in an executive session, be beholding to both a party, a corporation. Sure. So it sounds like very Unions. much the Hippocratic oath, uh, first do no harm. Tracy, let me ask you this. <laughs> Tom mentions par platform. Is there a libertarian platform, or is there such freedom within the libertarian party right. that there's no platform? Well, there is. There is a. There is an oath that we agree to, but we're not always a hundred percent in every case. Everybody following it to the extent of someone else in the party. They, 
argue with each other. What does that oath say? Yeah, it says that uh, we won't advocate uh, the use of force or fraud to achieve political ends, and we will oppose the initiation of force or fraud to achieve political ends, which means that I'm going to try to do everything in the community on a voluntary and respectful way. I'm going to find ways to work with people rather than saying, I have political power, I like doing it this way. You have to do my thing. Can I, I have an example for what she just said? In 78, at the last Constitutional Convention, the will of the people on the ballot was to protect and preserve important egg lands. Decades later, the city and county of Honolulu hasn't properly identified as important egg lands. They created an arbitrary urban growth boundary and disregarded the will of the people. So for decades, we have a state land use commission that if a proposal to petition from egg to urban that that contract is too breached, the level of justice comes back to the elected officials. Whose side are you on? The will of the people? Or are you going to play the game? So we have right now, uh, where I'm out in the Eva Plain area, Ho'opili, the most important productive ag land in the state of Hawaii. You can get four crops of corn there, found nowhere else. So when Tracy's talking about the will of the people, we thought back in 78, that we would have elected officials carry out the directive act by act, year by year of these uh, legislative sessions, that we've culminated now that something like Ho'opili would be protected on its face value as opposed to being developed. So it's about the will of the people. Of the uh, people. Tracy, I know you have worked very hard in order to populate the uh, the libertarian slate the, this election and uh, they didn't all your candidates didn't come as easily as Tom who, who put himself forward uh, how, how is that going uh, the recruitment of candidates for it's the big for it's the, the big it's, it's Hawaii County that's done the heavy lifting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hawaii County has a disproportionate number of candidates they have six of our of our legislative seats that are we're running are in Hawaii County plus our lieutenant governor's over there our second congressional district guy lives over there who you know and our lieutenant governor person lives over there so uh, and the people in Hawaii County have been really organized and doing things and there's a lot of enthusiasm over there uh, so they've done most of the heavy lifting uh, we were fortunate to have very early on a very good candidate come forward named Anthony Higa who I think you both know uh, who was you know very good for us because He's get the time to actually start in January and walk that whole district. Right. So Plus, probably on yeah, that, isn't so, it? Yeah, and it's, a lot of our candidates are more enthusiastic about um, talking about their issues than they are about going out and listening to people and knocking on doors. And like Tom said, ultimately it's going to be the will of the people. So you can't just, you can't just pontificate. Sure. And You've got to work. And I have to tailgate on work. the platform again because folks who are voting Democrat-Republican are believing that the platform, Democrat Party of Oahu, passes a platform says, we want to not just decriminalize marijuana and provide medical marijuana dispensaries, we want full-on regulation, bring it on. You won't find that, though, implemented at the legislature. Mm -hmm. That's where the discord comes about with the voter, and that's where the Libertarian Party will finally bring relief. If you folks are out there driving, wondering what to do, the Libertarian Party, such as I as a candidate, would say, I can get 120,000 estimated driving without motor vehicle insurance off the roads overnight. Many states would implement this or that. Well, the Democrats and Republicans would say, well, you know, the, the Hawaii Insurance Council gives me money, and they stand to lose money in this. They won't even hear those bills on behalf of the people. So if we want to have instant traffic relief, the number one crisis out in EVA is that when, the, when, when traffic moves, the economy does so with it. So we have to get back into implementing the will of the people. And I have this plan with the uninsured motorists that, you know, we're talking about philosophy and party ideology, what have you. But down to the basics, I think the common core of government services, do you want government in the housing business? We have a dichotomy going on where the city and county says we want to liquidate sure. living properties. But on the other hand, they want to spend $52 million to get into the housing business. Well, there's a lot of fruitful opportunities now to raise the question, should government be part of it, such as in our health care system as well, mm -hmm. and in particular in the Hawaii hospital system. Tracy, mm -hmm. how do you feel about the press or the news media coverage that Libertarian, libertarian Party members have been getting this season, uh, uh, this political season, compared to the past? Well, it's improving, but there's, 
you know, there's a difficult obstacle to overcome with media because they have an entrenched mindset of what the Libertarian Party has done in the past. And so when they're looking at us, they're just not considering us to be, you know, real, serious candidates. And we're, we're working particularly hard in this legislative um, or in this electoral period to convince them that whether our candidates end up with 3% or 30% or win or lose, uh, we are running serious campaigns. We are spending money. We are raising money. We are in the media. We are doing things that, that, that legitimate political parties do. Uh, we're not just, you know, a handful of crazy people, crazy people baying at the moon. And they need to start realizing that whatever else they do, that our party is interesting. And the people in the media, their first priority is to, is to tell the people in the public what is of interest to them and not to judge who is to win or to lose and to assume based on some poll data that's what they're supposed to report on. Well, I'll tell you this. From the libertarian candidates I've met, I, I, I had picked up one thing, that you're not all the same. No. <laughs> there, there, there's incredible diversity uh, politically and in style and so forth, but there, there's this radical commitment to the idea of freedom and individuality uh, or in, individualism. And, and I think that, that that comes across clearly. Tom, let me ask you. Um, have you been pleased with the, the, the news media coverage uh, of your race? I've coined a phrase <laughs> okay. actually called, I've been Davis. Davis. I've been Davis. Jeff Davis is the gubernatorial nominee right. for the Libertarian Party of Hawaii. And uh, he has been uh, purged in many instances, um, not marginalized. But uh, for me specifically, out in my race, uh, Honolulu Magazine did a piece we and saw, said, yeah, you got two crazy. candidates and I didn't exist. But labeling GMOs. If you look at the parties, you've got to really vet folks and find out where they stand. Libertarian Party, you go, wow, that's the will of the people. Consumer, consumers have the right to know. So when you think libertarian, you know that the will of the people to label GMOs is somewhat of a given. And uh, there's one thing missing here, uh, whether you are going to ignore libertarian, and I call it being Davis, and who's talking about jobs? Who is really bringing forth Job, you know, we're talking about homelessness, talking mm -hmm. about kaka'ako and infrastructure and what have you. Name the one cause of any candidate, state house, or uh, for, the, for the governor's race that's really got a plan for job creation. Because no matter what our ideology is, again, if you have a job, you're sure. deeply employed. Well, on, on that, that note, let's take do a segue here. We're going to come back after a short break. Okay. And then let's talk about some of the issues and the solutions that libertarians are offering to the state. Uh, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute, in a fascinating discussion that I've already had with some Republicans and Democrats, but now with the leaders in the Libertarian Party, Tracy Ryan, president of the party here, and Tom Berg, one of their candidates. And we're trying to see how the Libertarian Party thinks, what the Libertarian Party has to offer. And when we come back, we'll talk about what solutions they present to the public in the 2014 election. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia In Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to the environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Olalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And on, on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Aloha. Welcome back to our final segment of today's Ehana Kako program on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I have to say thanks to Jay Fidel for bringing us all together as volunteers and program participants to produce maybe 25 or more hours of content a week that goes out across the world. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Think Tech team. You're a great crew. And uh, today we're going to conclude our discussion with a couple of the representatives of the Libertarian Party here in Hawaii. And I go first to Tracy Ryan, president of the Libertarian Party. Tracy, what's a big issue that libertarians have a solution to offer Hawaii that we desperately need? Well, I'm the chair of the party, not the go. president. All right. So we'll clear that up. Well, you have, um, you're not running for president. The grand yeah, poobah. No, 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 I, I, no one has to kiss the ring or anything there like that. Um, well, you know, uh, Tom's been talking about you know, the economy and um, 
are we able to be productive in our work and hold employment and and gain a higher standard of living and that's it's always an issue in every election uh, the, the problem that I see is it, it's very difficult for a lot of people to follow the intricacies of economic arguments um, and so we end up in a place where the discussion comes about um, uh, name-calling um, rivalries uh, interest groups who are putting out stuff and, it, and people are being manipulated uh, so I think that the you know one of my biggest beefs is that we should be giving our young people with all the money we spend in public education a better grounding in how to understand how an economy works that an economy is fundamentally about creating value and that the demand for labor which is the the, the, the place where jobs come from stems from the desire to create value not the other way around one of the things I, I hear you saying is that there's a there's an ignorance of fundamental economic principles on the part of the, yeah, the adult yeah, I said community. that very clearly and there's also there's also I believe that the children should be trained in basic logic and, and mm -hmm. identifying fallacies because one of the problems we have, we have a lot of problems with, with all these ads that come out and they're spent by all these crazy people saying whatever they want. And a lot of the times they say the things they say don't really make any sense, but they appeal to you emotionally. And once you are appealed to emotionally, you stop thinking and start reacting. We want to help people become better consumers of political information. We want to help them think through what they're hearing and not just react emotionally because of some ad they saw. We don't want them to be so easily manipulated. It sounds like you're saying the Libertarian Party is a party for thinking people, a party that tries to promote thinking amongst the masses. This is, this is, this is true to a certain degree, and it's also been one of our problems. Mm. Um, it's a lot to overcome, because politics, unfortunately, politics in a democracy grows in, a, in a, an environment where hate, fear, and ignorance often carry the day. All right. It's very tough to overcome. Well said. Now, now Tom, w what's an issue where a libertarian, perhaps yourself, has a solution to offer Hawaii that's superior? Very, very tangible. Uh, the Attorney General Eric Holder, uh, all right. about a year ago, uh, told all 50 governors and marshals and attorney generals, if you have a robust program to regulate cannabis, you may do such. Now, industrial hemp cannot get one high. What's preventing our legislative body and governor from initiating, turning fallow ag land, places where there's very little water? What is it that prevents them? Well, having a leadership. And it comes down to having someone, look, when, when opening day comes, I envision this. It's not if Tom Berg won or any of the 17 that won. We, the, the individual candidate that win. It would be a voice of the people on opening day. If it were me, I'd first of all say and call out this profiteering scheme on the rail tax. But more importantly, it's folks that are out there don't want to hear that tit for tat. They want a job. 60,000 people every day in the state of Hawaii are looking for work. Every day. That number doesn't wane. And if industrial hemp were to be provided on the landscape, the federal government, in my opinion, if leadership would ask for such, would say, you want to commercialize industrial hemp? Food, fuel, true sustainability, hempcrete, homes. So that's the argument or i should say rather educational session yeah, yeah. that we as the libertarian party are just clamoring for to have a voice for all the people not tom berg as an individual candidate now to go back to what you said earlier about republicans and democrats very often the republicans have portrayed themselves as the opposition party to the democrats but you're, you're lumping them both together, and you're saying mm -hmm. we need an opposition party to both the Republicans and the Democrats. Republicrats. The Republicrats. Well, but again, <laughs> it comes down to they knowingly know mm -hmm. that the 10%, okay, it, it takes six to $700,000 a year for the state of Hawaii to collect that GET rail surcharge and then deposit it in the coffers of the city and county of Honolulu. But they're profiteering 16 to $20 million per year. Now, they then balance the budget with that money in the general fund that goes to neighbor islands who do not pay into that tax. Why is it on its, again, face value that the taxpayer on Oahu sees this, sees the, how government's playing this out, that they're taking more money than they need, violating the Constitution? Who of the 76 legislators and on the executive level of that building has said anything and has tried to really correct it and bang those doors down, that's what we need is a strong voice. Well, a frequent phrase you've used is the will of the people. Yeah. How many people, Tracy, do you think out there, what portion of the public 
is actually libertarian at heart and, and would would be uh, well I can only I can only tell you what the results that we found at various venues where we've done the world's smallest political quiz which I think a lot of people are familiar with if they're not they can google it world's smallest political quiz a series of questions section on uh, social issues like uh, you know marijuana stuff like that economic issues like uh, taxes spending and then we score it libertarian or conservative with blah 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 well we can socialist we can yeah the people who want the government to run the all every aspect of it we consistently find it's it's at least 25 percent mm -hmm. uh, and we find it it varies a little bit we find that small business people tend to be the most libertarian um, more affluent people often are more libertarian than the middle class or the working class poor people are often libertarian but they're often con confused because they don't have the background um, so it's it's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting dichotomy as to where the numbers are showing up. But definitely, if there's 25 percent of the public that's that's libertarian and are looking at this selection they're given in the in the ballot box, we, we can explain why 300,000 registered voters don't vote in Hawaii. We, we don't we don't we don't know how to play kick the can. There's no playbook in the Libertarian Party to play kick the can. Everything coming in has to balance that's going out. Core function and services of government. If if this is what I would like to propose. If they're not going to follow through and actually air condition the schools, then the air conditioning needs to be turned off at the state legislature, at the building. <laughs> that's, I think, what people are driving. That's what they really, is my legislator in this traffic? You know, that's what I think folks are thinking. So when I was a worker bee at the state capitol and I saw folks struggle and take all this time to testify, our government has made it difficult to participate, and I think the Libertarian Party is going to take the roof off that building, even though there may mm -hmm. not be a roof. Uh, there's, it's still there. <laughs> You've both <laughs> spoken about changing the mindset of people, getting people to think. I, I want to give you a last 45 seconds each, because we're on a deadline here, to say something to young people. I'll start with you, Tom. Something to the young people of Hawaii. You can look into the camera right there and okay. tell them. Um, for all of you that are getting, I'm going to pretend that you're in an air-conditioned school right now and that you can actually hear me and the fan isn't drowning out what I'm about to say. And that is, we have to get drugs out of the classrooms, out of the schools. You don't see Jack Daniels being peddled in the hallways, right? If we regulate it, the revenue coming in will now give you and your classmates, your peers, the ability to have money to actually do cessation programs, prevention programs. So let's get your colleagues, I want to say, when you go to school to have drugs completely out of your lives, and the best way to do that is to look at the Libertarian Party of Hawaii by lifting the prohibition on drugs, removing the war on drugs, ending the war on drugs will actually help everyone who has been in this circumstances Thank of being you, in, that, in Thank that environment. You. Now, Tracy, go ahead and look and say well, something to our younger generation. You know, we're not going in the right direction in this state. Many of you are unaware that there are $8 billion in unfunded liabilities to pay for public employee pensions. There's no money put aside for this $8 billion. In addition, there's another $18 billion in unfunded liabilities to pay for their medical care. Uh, who is responsible for creating all these unfunded liabilities? The Democrats. They're the ones in power. Uh, we're not part of that problem. So. We're going to offer you a different way of, of looking Good. at things. We're not going to add to the problem. We're going to start solving the problem. Thank you. Tracy Ryan, chairman of the Libertarian Party of Hawaii, Tom Berg, candidate for the House of Representatives. Both of you, thank you very much thank you. for thank you. being on our program today. I'm Kaylee Akina with the Grassroot Institute. Until next week, Ehana Kako. Let's work together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Aloha. Aloha.